Hey everybody, I'm Rick Beato. On today's Everything Music, it's What Makes This Song Great, episode 25. The band is System of a Down and the song is Chop Suey. It's coming up next. Chop Suey was the first single from the band's second record entitled Toxicity, which was released on August 13, 2001, actually just before 9-11. It was originally entitled Suicide, but the record label, I think, had them change it. The title Chop Suey is a wordplay on Chop Suey's side. So let's talk about the intro of the song. The tune begins with the slate of Rolling Suicide. Check it out. Rolling Suicide. So it's acoustic guitar in drop D, down a whole step, so drop C. Okay, so I'm gonna refer to this as if it's in standard tuning. So you've got the open A string, A, C, B, D, and then G, B, and then F, A, even though those, those notes are actually a whole step lower. And it goes like this. Then the band enters with a single hit on the bass and drums. And the electric guitar comes in, muted. Same chord. Then high tremolo guitar. It stays here. I want to talk about the tom groove here because it's a very cool groove when, when the drums enter full on in the intro. Then it comes in with a build up. It's one of my favorite heavy rock grooves. You can tell that it's a really high tuned piccolo snare in the track. Let me play what the bass sounds like in the intro here so you can get a feel for the sound. Really rattly but aggressive sound. When the riff comes in, it's a completely weird riff. Let me play it solo for you so you can hear it. Let me play along with the track. It starts here. It does a weird interval thing. Almost like an atonal lick. Check it out. Intervals are really strange, so it's that's the first part, but then when it comes in with the other part, it does different notes. Very, very cool. This is probably System of Down's most popular song. As a matter of fact, it's been parodied a bunch of times. One of the funniest ones is the Tenacious D version of it where Jack Black is going, wake up, yabba dabba 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 dabba. Now, that is a real form of flattery to have your vocal performance uh, parodied like that. But Serge's vocal line, when he starts up with wake up, grab a brush and put a little makeup, he just grabs you right from the top of the tune and pulls you in. Let's check out the vocal performance here in the first verse. <laughs> Vocals are really following the guitar in this with this half step motion. Let me solo the vocals so you can hear what they sound like by themselves. Check it out. Wake up, wake up. Grab brush and put a little makeup. I just got to fade away the shake up. Why'd you leave the keys up on the table? Here you go, create another fable. You, you can hear him going da 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 da, doing that half step motion that the guitars and bass do. Let me play the guitars and the bass so you can hear that. Drums are just laying back and playing. No snare hits, just a hi-hat open with a kick drum. And here it is with the drums and bass. 
You notice the drum pattern has no snare in it. It's got a really nice low mid-rangey hi-hat, not a really high sizzly one that stays out of the way of the top end of the guitars and creates that space to hear the vocal, even though the vocal is almost inaudible in spots. But I think it's a really creative and a different kind of drum part. Now, I want to bring attention to the second half of the verse in the vocals, because there's a really cool phrase he does like, on one of the climbing phrases. Check it out. Here you go, create another fable. You wanted to. Grab a brush and put a little makeup. You wanted to. I discuss the fade away the shakeup. You wanted to. That line, the climbing line there, hide the scars of fade away the shakeup, is really a powerful line, and it's almost obscured by what the band is playing at the time. Check it out. On the second half of the verse, the drums go into a different beat. Check it out. And then the drums lay back into the ride cymbal groove of the chorus. Where there's a real mood change. Let me play the beginning of the chorus here because it's really interesting how the guitars evolve into this. So it's really a hard stop there where everything is intense and it drops down to the muted guitar. Now we're to the chorus. I think the chorus is super melodic and it has a great chord progression to it. Check it out. So what's going on here is that we've taken this progression that, that is, is off this pedal tone and has just these moving thirds, but the bass line under it creates a really interesting progression. Let's talk about it. I'm accounting for the tuning change. G minor, and that third interval moves up to this, which is really an A diminished chord in inversion. And then it moves down to a B flat major seven with no third, and then it goes down to E flat major. Now, if you just took the thirds and you did this, you just were Now that doesn't really give you much information. Once the bass notes are added to it, it becomes a really hip chord progression that the melody works over. Let's take a look at the melody and harmony parts together. Why well, don't think you trust in my self-righteous I think the piano and vocal together actually demonstrate the chord progression and really how beautiful it is. So after the chorus finishes, he goes into that long die scream. Die! Check it out. When angels deserve to die. Goes around two times and then... Then it goes in that, in that blast beat fat. Dig it, dig it, dig it, dig it. Right here. And then we're into verse two. Very similar to verse one. It comes out of this into the second chorus. And we've added the strings in here. Here's a video from the making of this record where it shows you the strings being tracked. So here are the strings, piano, acoustic guitar, and vocals in the chorus, the second chorus. Check it out. Well, I don't think you trust in my self-righteous suicide. I cry when angels deserve to die. Then we have the held notes that come in the next section. Check this out. Self-righteous suicide, I cry when angels deserve to die. That really is what makes the song great. This chorus is incredibly, incredibly good. 
it's interesting because System of a Down is one of the few bands that is actually an alternative metal band. There's not that many alternative metal bands. You can say At the Drive-In or bands like that. There's ve- But there's very few bands like this. There, that's why it's such an original sound to combine these different genres together, have these really soaring melodies, and then have these aggressive, aggressive rock sections in it. So after the second chorus, we go back to the one of the intro riffs, but with that this more of a punk rock beat do da 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 do da do da it goes like this and then the next section where he goes into father in your hands i commend my spirit they go back to this riff And then into the start of the third chorus. So the high point of the track is the ending part here, which is really amazing. Let me play you just the vocals along with the strings and the piano, because it's really, really incredible. Check it out. Trust in my self-righteous suicide. And then the last few times around, he moves back into a lower register. Check this out. I think it's really effective for kind of bringing the song down. self-righteous suicide. Why cry when angels deserve to die? That's all for now. Please subscribe here to my Everything Music YouTube channel. If you're interested in the Beata book, you can go to my website at www.rickbeata.com and find it there. Thanks for watching.